we're still here. Still uploading, it's another day, it's another question. This is 40 days of questions. Yes, I am uploading a video every day in Lent answering your questions and it's going to write the smug before the trip and fall. So today's question is from Tom Chandler and Tom Chandler asks, how do you say no to opportunities that for whatever reason you can't do. I think for a really long time found identity in being a yes person. Um, I thought that that's how you got jobs, that's how you got opportunities, and it definitely is. Like, you should say yes for like the first 24 years of your life. But there does come a point either in your life or just in a week or in a day where you just have to say no to something because your capacity isn't there and you like don't have the like budget of time to spend on it. There are lots of currencies I think in this world that are like people understand run out, like money or food. Um, time isn't one that people seem to understand runs out. Energy is another one that people just think um, that you can just eat an endless amount of bananas and, and miss a, an endless amount of sleep. And um, God, this is stuff that I need to hear because I really don't, I haven't, I've slept like four hours a night for the past like seven nights, which is at this point I'm basically Margaret Thatcher and look how well that went. Oh, yeah okay it went out, I mean well she did get Alzheimer's and die and also took away people's milk money I'm not really sure what Margaret Thatcher did I just know that a repeat performance would make me eternally unpopular I was reading this great book called the magic art of not giving a fuck I will link some other videos about that that I've made but I fucking love that book one of the little golden nuggets I took out of that was this thing called the fuck budget um which is basically this concept where you um budget for all the fucks that you want to give when you've run out of fucks you don't need to feel bad about it because that's just the currency of fucks that that was that's the plan all along it's not that you haven't you failed to like make yourself into this huge elastic band it's just that like here is a unit of resource you ran out of the resources that's okay it's just explaining that to people a really great way that sarah knight um says you should do it is um by implementing personal policies the point that she makes is is that people respond because we're all kind of conditioned to be obedient um and understand um different constructs and rules um Telling somebody that something is a policy is very different from telling somebody that that just no, um, because a no a no sometimes elicits from some people a childish response, um, even if it sounds really adult and and professional and worthy, it, it's still a childish response for somebody to go no for these reasons and for the other person to essentially throw their toys out of the buggy. However, if you phrase something like it's a policy, so personal policy, and you phrase things to that person like that, they're more likely to understand that their no is part of a bigger network of. Um, of judgment and a, and a bigger plan um, that isn't a personal one. It's not like you're going no to them. Like, no, I don't want to do the thing you asked me to do. It's more like, so what you didn't know about your request is that there was already this big framework of plans in place and your request just can't fit into that. It's just physics, it's just maths, it's just science. Say all the hard subjects, it'll scare them. And that's okay because you didn't know this framework was here, but now you know it's here. I, I hope you can understand, obviously, because you're a really intelligent, clever, beautiful person, um, that your request doesn't fit into that. Soz. For instance, somebody wants you to come and volunteer at a thing that's their thing and you don't really want to do it because you want to like go home and like pick your toenails or whatever and you're tired you just go that's really cool but this whole week I'm actually doing this week of writing so I have to stay at home and write and then maybe you go into a little tangent about all the exciting things you're, you're excited to write about and they'll just like get really distracted and they'll be like oh oh well you know that does sound cool or you go like oh that's a really great event I'm, I want to be part of that but actually oh um you make yourself the bad cop this is what I do a lot I don't know if you're ever a kid and you tried to get your mum to get you out of things that you seriously didn't want to do so you'd be like, oh, I don't want, I can't go on that trip or I can't go and do that thing um, because my mum says I can't. Or like, I can't play out tonight because my mum, oh, my mum, like, you know, she's a bit. <laughs> when really, like, you've just been like, mum, mum, can you pretend that you're really strict so I don't have to do the thing? <laughs> Did I only, was it just me? I think I am a mid-trovert slash introvert in some ways. Anyway, you do that, but with yourself. You go, oh, I'd really like to, but I promised myself that I was gonna do all these tasks this weekend and like really like work on my ukulele playing. <laughs> what, some of the glasses and the lipstick and the ukulele? Oh God, I must live east. I, oh, like I, I would love to, like my impulse is like, yes. Um, but I, I gotta like, I gotta do the discipline thing. I've gotta like do what I promised myself I would do. Now I'm gonna tell my friends how I <laughs> get out of things. Oh dear. I have lost all of my social mechanisms of being able to be a introvert now. It was worth it for you, Tom Chandler. It's also really good to come up with other things. So for instance, oh, can you get me an internship or a job at your job? Can you like really go out of your way to get to know people in other random departments just so that you can get me a job there? even though I'm not sure if I want a job there. And you go, or I go sometimes in this situation, oh no, I'd like to, but it's like really awkward and um, I can't for this reason. Explain, because people are intelligent. You can just literally explain the reasons um, 
why you're saying no to something. And they can be intrinsic as you want. And actually, the longer you go on about it, the more they're probably like, okay, we get it, you can't do it. But offer them something in exchange. So, oh, I can't do that thing. It's really like, oh, I don't know, um, because of this reason and this reason. And I don't know if you knew this about my, my situation, but like, oh, this. Um, but I tell you what I could do. I could read your CV and give you feedback on it. Do you want, do you want to do that? And they might say yes, and they might say no, but they haven't just presented you with an opportunity and you've shut it down. You've also presented them with an opportunity, however smaller and less significant and, and, and more manageable that is, and they've said no to it. That, that feels like an equal, like, leveling. It feels like they didn't just, like, go, oh, do you want to do a, oh no, batted back down. You don't want them to make them feel like one of those gophers in the, in the, in the arcades. I was going to say crude sades then. In the arcades. Gophers in crusades. I mean, it would have been gentler. <laughs> You know what I mean, those people, I don't know. The gophers that are like, oh, and then they get hit by the hammer and they're like, oh, like you don't want, oh, you don't want them to feel like that. You want them to feel like a gopher. Let's take this further. That you want them to feel like a gopher who's like, oh, uh, and they've been go, no, I'm not gonna, not today gopher. And then you've tickled them on the chin and they've gone, okay, oh. Go for themed social fixes with Lena. It's also, yeah, like it's important to explain what you're saying yes to. So like, oh no, I can't go um with you on your hen do that's really expensive. Um because I'm actually spending that money on moving out of the flat that I really hate to live somewhere a lot happier. And I'm so excited about that. And that's why I can't come to this really expensive holiday that you planned around your own happiness. <laughs> because I'm um, making myself happy for these reasons because I need to self care. And then if they don't like those things, then that's cool. I mean, like, I think there are a lot of awesome people in this world and I always find it really hard to choose friends or like, um, you know, keep a manageable amount of awesome people in my life um, without like letting it expand into this huge thing. So if somebody does show that they're like, they don't get that or they don't, they prioritize their own like little plan or party or needs over like your own like basic levels of sanity, um, then that's cool. You just, you just found out that they're not like your fave and that's okay. They, they'll be go and be somebody else's fave. You don't need them to be your gopher. <laughs> Now, I don't follow all this advice, uh, as many people who know me will tell you, I do far too much. I say yes to far too many things, and I find it really hard to say no to other people's projects, and I barely concentrate on my own sometimes, and that is why I'm doing this. It's 40 Days of Questions with Lena. You can click here to read the playlist, click here to buy the t-shirt. <laughs> uh, you get it. It's a, it's a series. You can watch it if you want. Tomorrow's video is going to be a question. Spoiler. Okay, I'm going insane. Frog's not out.